All right, good afternoon, Mary. Welcome to Women of the Northwest, where today I get to interview you, who are gonna have your 100th birthday. <laughs> Thank you, it's nice to have you. Very exciting. Um, so, I'm wondering, uh, have you always lived in Astoria? No, I uh, lived here when I was uh, an infant until I was in the third grade. And then we moved to Portland, and uh, this was at the beginning of the Depression. My grandfather was in business here, and he lost his business. And so we moved to Portland, and uh, I w stayed there until I was finished at high, in high school. Mm. I had my whole high school career there. And uh, then I, after that, uh, I... I never I really never came home to live because I went to, to the University of Oregon and uh, after two and a half years I met and married my husband <laughs> and that was only because the war was on and we didn't think there would be any men available <laughs> left or available <laughs> But, it was a bird in the hand. <laughs> yeah, it, all it, there were no there were no men on campus. But anyway, I think that's remarkable that you went to college. He was from Astoria. He he was a he lived here all his life. So uh, we moved back immediately to Astoria. Tell me about what was college like then. College? Oh, I had a good time up to the <laughs> point when there were no men left. <laughs> I liked it very much. I joined a sorority house and and uh, was active in various things there. And, mm -hmm. and I belonged to Kappa Kappa Gamma, and I, uh, so so did Sally Roan, incidentally. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so uh, I had a very good uh, time the short time I was there. What were you majoring in? I majored in uh, physical education. Oh, and what was your plan? To teach. Did you end up teaching? Uh, no, I never <laughs> got my degree. Oh, so you would have had to finish that. I, uh, but tell her what you did do at Astor School. Oh, at Astor School, yes. She did well, use it. I was hired to uh, work as a teacher's aide, and uh, after I'd been there quite a while, and they discovered that this is what I had majored in, mm -hmm. most of the teachers really didn't want to teach PE. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was hired to work with the um, special ed. Okay. What do they call it now? They call it the, not special ed, but they call it, well, I can't think of what it is. Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I did PE for them. Mm -hmm. That was exactly what I was hired for. And when the other teachers saw that that's what I was doing for that teacher, they all wanted me to do it for <laughs> them. So that's how I kind of worked my way in. I see. And uh, I hadn't planned on that at all. Did it turn out to be um, what you expected it to be, working with, oh, the, yes, kids, I loved with the kids? Oh, yes, I loved it. Yeah? And uh, the longer I was there, the broader that they allowed me to make the program uh, the better it was. So I enjoyed that for about 15 or 16 years. And then uh, I was losing my hearing because a, a, a gymnasium with 200 or to 300 rights is just impossible. It just took my hearing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was given the opportunity to work with the librarian, okay, Fred Clayton, and so I switched jobs and became his uh, aide. Uh huh. That I just absolutely adored. Yeah. So I had had kind of a checkered <laughs> career there too. Were you at that time? Were you raising children? Oh, my children were all already grown. Okay. Not uh, they, uh, they were all in school in Astoria. Mm -hmm. but they were uh, the youngest one was in middle school. I see. And so I felt it was time that I could do that. Uh huh. How many children did you have? Four. 
three girls and a boy. Okay. All right. One lone boy. Oh, I bet he got picked on, or I bet he picked on his sisters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was a, he was kind of a handful, but he's a, <laughs> he's a nice guy now. <laughs> <laughs> he grew out of the handful. <laughs> he didn't uh, develop into anything too bad. <laughs> well, you were probably a great mom. What's, yeah. a, what's your earliest memory? My earliest memory, I guess you'd have to say, living on 15th Street here in Astoria and getting the newspaper delivered in the afternoon and the neighbor girl and I, who was about my age, I, I don't think I was in school yet, we always ran for the funny paper. Oh. And we spread it out right there on the sidewalk <laughs> and flopped down on our tummies yeah. and read the funny papers. And I have that, I must have been about three. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, I whenever I think of, of my beginning in Astoria, I always, that image it's always image. comes to my mind. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. I I remember, you know, now that you say that, that's one of my early memories as well. But I was probably in fourth grade and realizing that I could do more than just look at the pictures. You could read too. I could actually read and it <laughs> meant something there. So, uh, yeah. We probably made up our own dialogue for them. But sure. I, I just the thought now of lying flat on my tummy uh, with my hands on the sidewalk you know <laughs> oh how fun was that how fun how uh what did your husband do pardon me what did your husband do what did i have to do what did your husband oh where did, did he you? work oh he his father had uh, the general motors agency here and uh when oh, okay he got out of school he came to work for his father and eventually took it over. I see, yeah, interesting. Um, so talk about some of the changes you've seen in your life. Oh, Astoria has, has not changed a whole lot, except for, uh, I would say, maybe a few improvements downtown and mm -hmm. buildings downtown uh, on the waterfront especially. But the biggest change and the greatest change I, I think that's happened to us has been the river walk. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It is. It has just made this town, mm -hmm. and it goes all the way from the, uh, out at the uh, uh, pure water, whatever you call it, thirty-nine, all all the way up to uh, almost ten point. Yes. I know, isn't it just uh, so fun? And it it's so is. beautiful it's just and marvelous and safe. It's a safe place yes, to walk, it and it's a, it really is. And yeah. a lot of good conversations happen along there. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that's a great improvement. I was thinking about um, the pandemic of. 1918, but you were just a tiny girl at that yeah, time. Yeah, it was kind of winding down at that point. I think uh, I remember my parents were married in 1915, and they were talking about it then, how what a, a, a terrible thing it was. They lived in California at the time. And uh, so it went on for a number of years too, just mm -hmm. like this one is. And eventually ended? <laughs> Pardon? It eventually ended? Oh, it, it eventually did. <laughs> so maybe there's hope. Maybe it's morphed into what we're having now. <laughs> oh my. You also lived through the Depression. What do you remember about the Depression? Oh, I. what do I remember? I, I remember that uh, uh, we had a big house in Portland, a big old-fashioned house, and it had three bedrooms, and my father and mother took in 
his father and mother, and then his brother lost his job, and he didn't have any money, mm. so he, he, they didn't live with us, but they lived across the street, and they had Sunday dinner with us every single Sunday, mm. he and his wife and child, and then, let's see, uh, my sister and I had one bedroom, my parents had another, my grandparents had one. And my grandmother was a seamstress by trade, mm. a beautiful seamstress. And uh, she used to let me watch her sew. And it became kind of a passion of mine, too. And then you became a quilter? Pardon me? You became a quilter? I did, did that, that inspire you? Of, it, be, it was sort of becoming a thing here <laughs> about the time I uh, uh, retired. So I. Uh, well, that's kind of fun. I'll try that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I made, oh, I made countless quilts. Yes, yes, so have I. <laughs> it's rewarding. Yeah, it is. Did you like, when you were quilting, did you like doing the process or did you like the end product? I liked, I liked the various steps, but I think the best part of all was after it was pieced together and you picked it up I always had a big hoop uh -huh. put it on my lap and took that first stitch yeah that first stitch was the one uh-huh just and I always went back to it and looked looked for that first stitch when mm. I was uh, huh you know trying to figure out where did I start on here I know it was right smack in the center <laughs> That was, that's interesting. What kind of colors did you like to use or patterns? How oh, did you I decide? used everything. Just everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was there any certain kind of a, a fabrics that you liked more than others? No, just the just, usual that I could yeah. buy at the fabric store. <laughs> One of my daughters now is taking old quilts and turning them into jackets. Oh, she's making, how lovely. That she's been selling. What a great and, idea. Yeah, and they're pretty cute. They're. Uh, I have one at home that was on my bed uh, in my guest room, and it was in the sunlight for too long. Oh, no. And one day, uh, I went in there and uh, threw it back for some reason or other, maybe to change the sheets or something, and all of a sudden these pieces just started oh. flying around the room. Oh, no. And so I... I haven't done anything with it. It's we just turned it over and put the other side down, but that was a real lesson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was it was a quilt that was a later one that I did very hurriedly just because uh -huh. I had a lot of scraps. But uh it was it was uh, uh just astonishing mm -hmm. to see those pieces just start flying. <laughs> And not in a magical way. <laughs> no. So we don't have sunlight on our quilts anymore. Right. I know. I noticed that with, I have a, a log cabin quilt that I made that's on my bed. And it has, um, using ballet batiks and purples and blues and whatever like that. Oh. But the sun coming in, I'm thinking, I better cover that up. So <laughs> I do cover it when I've got my curtains open. Cause, yeah. Yeah. It's too much work to let that just fade away and yeah. <laughs> not me. Oh, so I am sure you had lots of recipients of your beautiful quilts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you were and still are a PEO. How has that been? Oh, it's been wonderful. I was uh, happy I, that I was uh, just winding up getting ready to retire and, and, uh, I was very pleased to be asked, and uh, Judy was one of our original 12, I think, wasn't it, Judy, that we had? Judy Atkinson. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, we formed our new chapter. And What year was that? Gosh, uh, um, 82? You know where my little book is over there? See if you can find it, Judy. 
should be right in the front there. 18, 1987. 1987. Okay. Yeah. And Judy, had you been a part of PEO before, or how did you think I, to start I, this? I joined my mother's chapter. I see. Uh, when I was just getting out of college. So, okay. Um, but I was never president. Jean Barney was our first president. Yes. And Mary was our fifth. Okay. But anyway, we had such a gr great group of women, and there's I'm sure the same way still. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to a few meetings in the past years, and many of the gr girls I don't, I, you know, I hadn't known. They've been new to me, right. but they're just lovely. Yes, and yeah. uh, so I think it was of all the things that I have organizations that I joined afterwards. Uh, it was the most satisfying to me. Uh huh. Because of the relationships? Well, yes, that and, and, and the, and the uh, uh, reason for our mm -hmm. being. And, and scholarships for young scholarships, women or from women yes. in general. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. worthwhile. Yeah. I was going to look up and see how many thousands of dollars that our PEO has given oh. in scholarships because there's been tons. Oh, wait, really and truly. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen the blanket that they did that we, oh, we, we made thousands of dollars on The that. Afghan? Yeah. The oh, yeah. Af red, uh, oh. Rosy red and white. Right, right. With the okay. different uh, scenes of Astoria. And the dates. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. That was a... That was a real great fundraiser. That was a big, a big hit, wasn't it? And we're still selling tulips every spring. Really? Yeah. What do you know? That's, That's great. Grand. Um, what kind of a, what was the first car that you remember? First car that I owned? Well, or that your parents, your family owned, oh, that you remember? My family owned, uh, my mother had an old Dodge Coupe. <laughs> and it had icing glass windows. Oh. And uh, well, it was a very drafty car. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't like to go too far in it, but uh, she had that. And then later on, my father owned a Model A Ford. Okay. Because they were in the Ford business, my family. Uh-huh. And then the, when they uh, uh, left the business when I married into General Motors. <laughs> I've been a Chevrolet girl ever since. <laughs> oh my, yeah. I remember um, we had a station wagon. It, it had a woody side on it, whatever, and if you sat in the back, you could roll down the window, which, you know, we were all, there were four of us kids. Yeah. And so I remember one time traveling um, through New Mexico and it was all desert everywhere, but somehow we got into some kind of a row, my siblings and I. <laughs> and I like to blame it on my brother. I don't know. My memory might be a little tainted, but somebody threw my shoe out the back window. And my mother was, when she found out, was frantic because <laughs> my parents did not have a lot of money at the time and we had to go turn around and look everywhere until we found my shoe because oh, I'll never be it. able to afford oh. another pair of shoes for you Janet you'll have to <laughs> go barefoot <laughs> well that it would have been a, a tragedy you know mm -hmm. in, uh, for some people right it would have been for my family yeah yeah, yeah. We got a pair of, uh, I remember when I was going to school in Portland, my mother took us every fall to Myron Franks, my sister and I, and bought us our school shoes for the year. And they were heavy brogues, mm -hmm. very thick uh, soles, and they were always fitted one size too large. Mm -hmm. So you could grow into so them. So we could grow into them. You just wear an extra pair of socks. <laughs> I didn't like to slop around in them, but that's what we wore. <laughs> but really it was, uh, my memories of, of the days of the Depression 
were such that I didn't realize that we were poor. Oh. Uh, because my father always had a job. It might not have paid very mm -hmm. much, but he was never out of work. Mm. And he put in a victory garden in the backyard and and he just did everything to make things come together. He mm. was the busy bee in the whole family. Yeah. And uh, I, I just remember that they were happy days. Mm. And uh, we didn't realize we were poor because everybody was poor. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. It yeah. was just astonishing how 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 few people had work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom' stories were about um, what she called hobos at the time, <laughs> stopping by, and her mother always having giving them a loaf of bread or giving them something to eat. And yes. then also about her going out and collecting dandelion leaves to mm. eat. <laughs> that it was just sometimes there just wasn't much of anything. Uh -huh. They're for sale down at the co-op. I saw them yesterday. <laughs> and now as a delicacy. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. interesting. Hmm. Well. I would like to ask, uh, uh, Mary, what are some of your first memories of Grace Church. Oh, I would tell us. Well, now that's been close to 80 years. <laughs> so uh, my first, when we, when we were first married and moved back to Astoria, Bob said, you may choose any church you want to go to. And I said, well, let's, my family were Presbyterians, let's go there. So we went to that and I didn't, I thought it was an in the interior of the church was very interesting, mm -hmm. but I didn't uh, particularly take to it. Mm -hmm. And so then I think we went next to the Methodist <laughs> church, and my husband very dutifully never said a word <laughs> came along. And then we went next to the Episcopal church. <laughs> And that's where he went to Sunday school all his life. Okay. And the Boy Scouts. He hadn't told me that. But uh, he uh, was very happy to have me go there. So that's yeah. where you settled? We settled there. That's amazing. And that was in 19... I joined the church the same year I was pregnant with Jane, and she will be 70... She's now 74. Mm. Okay. And uh, uh, so that's how long I've been an official member. <laughs> and uh, I, I've loved it. I've loved everything about it, but it was the music that got me. I like that kind of music. Uh -huh. And uh, They have a pretty nice organ, don't they? We uh, have sing-alongs on Sunday afternoons here uh, at one of our... Um, residents plays the piano in the main Fun. activities room and people sing. And the, the, some of those old Methodist hymns come flowing right back. <laughs> I can sing all the first verses, but I can't go beyond. What's one of your favorite hymns? Oh, I don't know. I love Ferris, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a new with it. I like very much. The one about the come to the seashore. The what? The seashore. No. Well, it has something to do with water and either a river or something. I can't, I haven't heard it for so long, but uh, that's the one that, mm. <laughs> that has six sharps. <laughs> I, I asked the organist to play it one Sunday when I was there, <laughs> and he very dutifully did, but he's, he, and I thanked him, and he said, well, you should, because I had a terrible time. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever play piano or organ at church? I played the organ for the children's choir. Okay. We had a little small uh, electric organ. Okay. Uh, but I never played the pipe organ. Yeah. Yeah. She was in the choir. 
I yeah, imagine they sang in the choir for a long, long time. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I bet that's so fun. That's neat. What do you, um, what would you attribute being able to live as long as you have? Oh, I guess you'd have to say it's good genes. <laughs> <laughs> I have no, I don't know. I'm nobody in our family except my father and I have lived to be in our, into our 90s. Mm -hmm. huh. uh, and in his family, nobody lived past 70. Oh. Both of his parents died when they were 70. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the dreaded yeah. number. And uh, when he got past 70, he became a new man. <laughs> <laughs> he was... He was pretty leery until he got to 70, and then he began to live. Oh, my. Yeah. I think I, it's her attitude, Mary's attitude. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that has a lot to do with it. Uh, uh, you can always find something to be happy about. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm not always happy, but uh, you, you can... Make lemonade out of lemons anytime. <laughs> Your cup's half full, not half empty. Yeah, yeah. If you had a piece of advice to give to your grandchildren, what would the best advice be for them? Uh, it would be I think I would have to say love the Lord. And always try to do your best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think you could get to any better advice than that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So many youngsters now don't even know the Lord because a lot of people don't go to the organized church anymore. But, mm -hmm. oh, well. Yeah. Glad yeah. I did and still do. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really the ma most major part of my life. Mine, yeah. It has, uh, it's affected every part of my life. Right. Yeah. Understandable. Maybe that's part of longevity. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Anything else you'd like to share with us? Oh, golly. Uh, I can't think right off the bat uh, I'm having I have troubles with memories and uh, <laughs> thinking of names is very very oh difficult. my gosh yes <laughs> I had such a hard time thinking of Sally Roan's name today when I was thinking back over the uh -huh. over the years and I could see her just as plain as day, but mm -hmm. could I call her name? And look how long it took for me and to remember happen. Monty's name. <laughs> that'll happen when I'm trying to think of one of my grandchildren. I name. know, because you can picture them you know, right there in front of your face. Yeah. Yes. yes. So it's, it's a time of life now that's uh, kind of challenging. Mm -hmm. How about, uh, do you have any goals you want to attain to? Well, goals, I don't know, just uh, living every day. Keep on. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mary. This has been wonderful. I'm so glad that well, you... Well, it's so nice to talk with you, Jan. Agreed, too. And uh, I hope you can get something out of this. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Uh, thank dig you. Out, dig out a few of the more extraneous stuff.